Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here. Delighted to be joined in the shed with Jake Jackson. Good morning. Now, for those of you who don't know, basically 99% of the samples made by Spitfire Audio are tracked, as in recorded by Jake, but also mixed. And that's an important thing. We yeah. actually mix the samples as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I balance, make sure that the signals are balanced nicely, um, put together each each sound, make sure there's no, make sure to balance the outriggers to the tree and close mics and all that kind of stuff. And then I also do some mixes as well, which are nice. So some of the more expansion packs have my mixes in them as well. Absolutely. I think it's important to remember that the mic positions on our sample libraries, they're not just a mic or a pair of mics. No, they actually no. can be several mics, several. certainly with the close mics. Yeah, the close mics, they're several joined together, balanced nicely, make sure you can hear each desk if you're doing violins or... And, and, and something that also is a massive part of your job, which is something that maybe a lot of composers aren't really aware of, is actually mixing the music, yeah. even when composers haven't had the budget to use live musicians. What, what is the advantage of getting someone to mix your music for you as opposed to, you know, maybe adding a little bit of EQ, a bit of top, you know, that kind I, of stuff? I think it's, um, it's getting a, a, a fresh balance and a fresh idea on, on their music. It's um, understanding a little bit more necessarily about how best to balance something for a specific genre. All I do is record and mix. And I think the thing that we, we forget is that, that we are listening to our music differently. You know, we are centred on the melody, the harmony, the balance between those different voices and the arrangement, the orchestration. Whereas you're specifically kind of focusing in on the sonics, not necessarily what the arrangement is. No, it's less about the arrangement. Yeah, it's more about the, the technical side of getting it mixed. Nice level, keep it dynamic. Um, make it sound as good as it possibly can. Absolutely. Now, I've prepared a track using our new solo strings library uh, in context with uh, some woodwinds and some of our chamber strings. And it was very interesting this morning because I listened to it and was like, well, sounds all right to me. I don't know if there's much for, for Jake to do. But the minute you came through and had a listen to it, I started listening to it with your ears yes. and just went, well, actually, as it goes on, the bass gets a bit swimmy and it loses definition, all of that. Yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting. The moment you present it to somebody else, you suddenly hear something after listening for it for two hours and you go, why didn't I hear that before? You know. So what I've done is linked below uh, my version of the track as you heard it this morning. So you can actually form your own comparison. And, be <laughs> no below yeah. <laughs> and beneath that is a wav of uh, your mix, Jake. But you're just kindly going to take us through uh, your process. This took you about... An hour and 45 uh, minutes? Yeah, an hour and a half, something like that. Hour, yes, about, uh, yes, an hour and 45, thing, hour and a half. The thing about mix engineers who work in film and TV is, is you mix incredibly quickly. What we've done here is uh, you're, you've not actually mixed it. I've not had to track layer it into Pro Tools. No, we decided to do this one in Logic. Absolutely. And so that there is that nice thing of I don't have to basically break what I've been working on no. for you to kind of rebuild no. it and then take it on. Well, and that's, but also, what also this is also worked successfully for me is from a, um, a business point of view was that I could do this with clients if they're in the middle of a project but they haven't quite finished yet. They say they've got, um, on Friday, they have a meeting with the director, but they need to get things sounding really nice for it and then it needs to be delivered on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's that like I can come in on the Wednesday, do the mix, leave it in Logic, and then, the, then if you need to make any changes with the director on Friday, those changes can be made, and then you've still got my mix and it's all finished. Brilliant. But if you, have to, if you have to bounce it down and then the director says, oh, we need to just take out a second here, for whatever reason, then that is much more tricky to do. So you have maybe not realised this, but I've actually played around with the microphone balance quite a lot in some of these ah, things. To, fantastic. Just to, just to give it some definition in places and to also give it some space in other places, to, just to fantastic. help it balance it. So being able to keep it in, in um, Logic and in MIDI is really Sweet. powerful. And so right. a couple of clients I work for actually often give me director's notes to deal with as I'm mixing it. They'll say, right, here's a list of notes. and Because I can... I can make those notes often from mix changes, or I might just add a few extra, you know, sounds in if they, if they trust me that much, okay. which I've been doing Amazing. sometimes. So shall we dive in? So what I do is listen through to it once, um, get that idea of it, talk to you about what you want, and then you kind of, I like to be left alone so that I can just go into my own way without feeling of too much pressure of, oh, well, well you know. What, what, that, I have to say, it's something I really recommend is walk out of the room when someone's mixing your track. I think it's very important that you maintain a degree of subjectivity, Absolutely. which you lose after, you know, and and there may be points where, you know, like, you know, 70 cues in that you may get snow blindness and it's really good that you have a oh, fresh absolutely. set of absolutely. ears that are trained to, to the track and what you need to do with the picture. But also, it is quite agonising because there will be things that, there will be a workflow that you'll be unfamiliar with and suddenly 
is something will be way too loud for half an hour and it'll start stressing you out. But I'm not, I won't be listening for that. I'll know that that's too loud, but I know I'm not listening to that part. I'm listening to something three layers that's in. And what I like to do, and if, if I'm turn, if I'm giving something like this, I should literally go through each sound and make each sound sound as good as possible. Right. In relation to what it's doing, it's not like the samples sound like they need to be made better. It's just no. we're concentrating on this region. It's performing this. Yeah, I literally go through solo each, listen to it and go, okay, great. That's sounds nice. Add a bit of reverb, whatever. This tiny bit of EQ from time to time because I know I wanted this to have a little bit more cut. I think a lot of these ones I actually added up oh. a little bit of close close mic in it about whatever that is. Yeah, about minus, I don't know what this, how these work out, but let's say like 66%. When we recorded this library, we it was all about the musician and I put some, and I also, but also about the microphones we chose as a close mic. I spent a lot of time making sure that they were meticulously in a really, really good place because it's one musician you can really, yeah. obviously it makes a big difference about where, where they are at. So, and obviously for each player, it's different because their instrument sounds different. So you can't just put it in the same place for the same player. You've got to listen to the, how that instrument sounds and how that performer is performing. So we spent a lot of time on the mic positions on this one. Yeah, so, I've, so I just added a tiny bit of EQ on this one for that. It's never very much, it's just to enhance. You'll notice that all these are going to the same reverb all the way through, similar reverb. It's a kind of glue, isn't it? It's a glue, yeah, it's a glue. And also, even though this has got, all these have the air space on them, some of the space you lose because of just the sample and the way that it works, Process. processing and, and uh, cleaning it up. But uh, so, I, so this one, I had, again, I added a bit more ambience on this one as well, just because I wanted it to sound a bit, a bit different if I didn't have if I just had a bounce then I could obviously just apply different amounts of reverb or whatever but like I said it's really nice to be able to to play with I think often what I do with uh, engineers is even though I've not used uh, all of the mics I'll print certainly the close as well as the tree because it is a very common tool for riding. I don't use close because historically it would use up more voices and then you get channel stealing and stuff like that. Not a problem with these new computers, but I think it's worth printing even if... You oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. I mean, in fact, the ambience is nice because then if we're doing a 5.1 mix for, for film, Absolutely. then I've got some dedicated mics which I would have automatically put in in a mix yeah. situation if I, was using this, if I was using a recording of it. So I literally went through all these, made them all sound nice for each section. This is the middle section. It's a bit longer. Um, just again, just about this one's this one, for example, has got um, an extra very long reverb on it, which we put in, which is nice for an effect. It's a very long one because I, one of the sounds I haven't played yet, we'll talk about that in a minute, is uh, it's really ambient. So I wanted to just add a really like this middle section is is a is the B the B section, and so let's make it let's make it more like that. Uh, again, more sounds. This one was quite interesting. So what we did here was because this is a, like an answer phrase because we kept when we did the solo strings in their essentially orchestral positions. So we had um, our violin one leader was where the first desk of violins would be. And then we had the kind of uh, virtuoso player was in a kind of recording concerto position. So hey, where you'd have the first and second desk of violin, you remove those desks and put them one desk further back. Okay. And you have the virtuoso player in there oh, next I to conductor. See. Yep. But also in in the nice part of the tree, so they're like they're right there in front of the tree. So that's where we that's where we put Jack was in that yeah. in that area. So then we put the progressive player in a more kind of I guess secondish kind of violin. So just to make it a bit different. But for this, you said yourself you noticed that it was all a bit too one sided, which is yeah. fine. So what we did was literally just um, put a uh, plug in on that that flips left and right yeah. like on the thing. So. It's a perfectly acceptable thing to do. It's not doing anything apart from literally putting the left on the right and the right on the left, which is yeah. a really nice way of making a sample sound more like a business. Because obviously, if we'd recorded this, we'd have it set up so you'd have one player here and one player there, just yeah, to make absolutely. it just to make it sonically interesting. So don't be don't be scared of doing that. No, absolutely. Or indeed panning. I think this is something that we're all scared of. You know, you get these stereo images. You want to keep them as wide and as broad yeah. and as stereo as possible. But actually, panning is a really effective way of creating separation, not just EQ and compressions. And one all that. word of warning with pan and Logic is that um, although Logic, the new Logic Pro X, has done pan properly beware that a pan isn't always what it says it is in Logic. See, if you look here, it says, pops up with a nice little thing saying pan. But if you click on it, it's actually a balance fader. So that actually means that if you turned, if you had a stereo signal on the left and the right, if you panned it left, you would get none of the right. Oh. So you need to make so sure. So it's basically going. Yes. Turning up left or turning up right. So if you want to pan with Logic, go to stereo pan mode, <clears throat> and at which point, 
that is now a stereo pattern. You can see that it moves the, le the right-hand signal across to the left-hand side. Um, or How long have I been using Logic for? <laughs> 20 years? I think I might have done. I think I've probably told you that one before. No, but you um, oh, There you go. You there you go. It's the another church. one. Next one. <laughs> or if you're in Christian's mode of being in uh, balance. Which is not knowing any not better. Not knowing any better. Is that you can use this plugin here called Imaging um, Direction Mixer. And that does uh, the same thing. So that then is there's your panning. And also you've got a kind of fake spread there as well, which is kind of a bit, you know, does what it does. Oh, um, Jesus. But um, the best thing to do is to do this and go to a pan. And also, but that, I, I, if I'm correct me, if somebody will don't correct me wrong, but I'm pretty certain that's a, a preference you can set up as well. Um, so I shall make sure you do that, Christian, from now yes, on. Yes, please. Because uh, there's nothing worse than um, actually taking a stereo sample and making it mono. We did that to make it sound really nice. So if we just listen to those quickly, you can hear that they've... You can hear it's got a lovely left, right, like... Um, call and response thing which is makes it much more interesting than if I turn it off and have a listen so we'll have a look it still sounds nice but it's not as interesting it kind of sounds it could be like one instrument yeah, I mean, all yeah. playing something impossible yes <laughs> or a couple of players but that really there you hear it you hear it immediately it just gives it more life and more just so then we've got viola again I, I cued it didn't EQ this one just a bit of reverb and probably played around with the the close again just to give it a bit of we just turn those off. It still sounds nice. This just, this just gives it a, just a little bit more. Uh, we've got the cello. Again, still no EQ. If you notice, there's still very little EQ on this. A um, um, bit more close mic on this one. Um, but again, that could be because of the instrument more than anything else. So don't always don't always use the same balance because the musician makes a difference for each. For each for but each. also their position you know, regarding the tree as well, you know, so the front desks are going to be a lot closer sounding yeah. with the tree mic yeah, than, absolutely. say, uh, a tuba. Of course, it, yeah. about that, that's, yes. I mean, obviously, we've discussed over the years in the suburbs how we want to do that. Do we want to, like, you know, move the tree for a tuba, for example? But it's important that for most people, we weren't using this as a way of making an orchestra sound like an orchestra. Yeah. So that's the way you do that. Yeah. And then for the people who want to use... a uh, uh, you know, make a tube, tuba sound like a solo, then you've got the other options. You've got the mid mics that then come in to take over from the tree. So yeah. you've got that. We've got a bass here, um, more pits. Again, a bit of close mic in there as well. Um, again, not much in terms of EQ here. There we go. So this is a nice bit of, um, again, a, a tiny bit of time, a bit of close mic on this one as well. Just, to, just because it's, if you go from, if you even if this piece has got a very distinctive um, A and B section, you still need it still needs to feel part of the same piece. If it went from being really close and dry to then being really lush, it just it just wouldn't work. You need so you need to have even though we go to this section that is very ambient, you still need to have some of the presence to make it feel like it's the same piece. Right. Got a little bit of EQ on this one. Again, this this one is just to just just to help it like blend with other bits. The flat tenor sound. May look like quite a lot of EQ, but I'm only taking it down by 4 dB, which again, which sounds so may sound like quite a lot, can we but hear it in and out? you can, of course. Uh, you can see we're using the fab filter, Chris and I've discussed, and also both agree it's a really nice EQ. Mainly it works, but also it's just got a very nice user interface, which is really nice to see what's going on. You like, can't underestimate how things make people feel, and if you enjoy using something, you're likely to, to concentrate on it, maintain your concentration, and work with it harder than yeah. if it's some horrific you know, dial that you yeah, can't really... It doesn't make... What I love about this is that you shouldn't... Um, you shouldn't uh, use it as a way of looking at it and go, okay, well, I must add some certain, you know, I must add the, I must add, oh, look, there must be, I must take this away, for example, because it looks... It's where the note is. It's just exactly, it's exactly what it is. But it's very useful, so if you can see, if you know there's something that's not quite right, you could have got an opportunity to fix it. Um, but also you can then see the harmonics. So if you like a particular thing, you know, you can dial in very quickly and... Um, and just add a certain frequency, which is maybe quite nice to enhance it. So, but also this is just very nice because you can just grab anything and just you know move it around. I'm just doing it for example now, but but it's a very nice way, right EQ for that. Now, 
a quick little tip here for the Logic EQ, which is also very handy. It does a very similar thing. Um, you've got the analyzer here you can turn on off. But what, uh, what I would recommend you do if you, if you do use this is to go ahead and just change these Q positions, Q points of how Logic do it, because it's such so wide that if you push that up, look, you're, you're yeah. changing everything from 200 hertz up to 20 hertz, which is 20, yeah, 20, 20 kilohertz, thing. which yeah. is the whole thing, which is essentially, I, I feel, is an unusable way of doing it. So what I like to do is if I come across this in someone's template, I like to just go through and just make these all about a Q of one. What you do is you just save this as uh, save as default. And now forevermore, you've now forever, ah. you've now got these just much more sensible ways of being able to use it. And you can also, you can obviously just change it if you want to. But the, when it's less than one, it's, I, I find it's a bit unusable for what, how I want to use it. And I think people would agree. So there's more sounds here that probably some of these are named, might be named a bit wrong. Um, ah, this one here, this is a bit more different. So here, I, um, this is our bass. Which one is this? This is our chamber strings. So it's a two or th so three or four basses. Um, I like this sound very much, but this is where we were talking about it being quite bass heavy at this point. So I used a bit of a two things. I just took a tiny bit of EQ out, but also what I did was use a multiband compressor to only compress the bottom end so that it just took off some of the bottom end. So if you watch, it's just it's just tickling the um, the bottom end just to help control it. I'll take I'll take this out and out and you can hear. Just helps. You still get some of the nice attack, yeah. but without the yeah, with the you can real hear the notes, but yeah, so. without 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 it bl blooming quite as much. Quite a neat, quite a neat way of just controlling yeah, the bottom great. end, but without pulling it all out. But it's. But I also think with that interface, because I've never used the multiband, but I I can understand what it's doing now. Well, so. I, I actually I I'm I've I've started using this a lot more because like it's exactly that point because you can just see enough. Yeah. So what this is actually doing is a tiny bit of EQ there. And then also, then it's got this various things. You've got the range here, which is how much it reduces it by. So you can set it to not do very much. Like the range means that you can the maximum it's going to reduce it by is three dB. Right. Just quite a neat way of doing it. So you're not, you know, you're not going to slam the bit, but it just helps to control it threshold and obviously all these other things make what they are. If you ever, I would recommend the Fab Filter plugins very much, and um, they've got an excellent YouTube. Um, of all explanations of all their plugins, which oh, is really, brilliant. really good. So, um, if we'll you look at that below. These, yeah, just just go to their, web, their just YouTube or search for them, and they're really, really, really well explained. I tend not to compress too much for certainly for film and orchestral music. I don't do anything more than probably three or four dB more than anything because it just changes the character of the too much. Unless that's exactly what you want, unless you're after that kind of... But I think also when something's, when the signal is not as direct, when you're using, when it's got room in oh, and all of that yeah. kind of stuff, it just, it becomes very, uh, very cumbersome, as opposed to putting a, an SM57 over a snare drum, yeah. then, then that's, that's all you're going to get. Yeah, exactly, so you'll, you'll play around with that. Um, so again, um, this is the other bass, I think it's a bit more bass, so I guess it's probably, yeah, it's an octave lower. Um, so just, a, this one's got a bit more EQ on it, blimey, I went crazy. Um, So a bit of brightness, a bit of some of this kind of stringiness take gone out, but it'll play with that. It's, it sounds like you've taken it from sounding like that to sounding like that. Yeah. yeah. It speaks and, a lot more. And it's worth, it is worth just looking at these things. It's very, they don't have to be very, very subtle things. A lot of people, time people think you have to do a lot of EQ. That is maximum there like, of 2 dB. So it's tiny amounts, 1.6. 1, 1. So it's a change of 3 or 4 dB, but... Tiny amounts across 32 stereo tracks, though, and these, these little yeah, percentile yeah. points make... But uh, yeah, I think conversely, if you do it too much across 32, you're suddenly going... Oh, you've got, holes, you've got holes in places and that kind of stuff, which is why this is, I think it's really important to go through. I think don't write like this. I think this is a, this is a mix. This is a mix. Yeah. Top tip is not to think about this at the writing stage. Do this as a mix point. So you've done the... Try and, put to, try and if you can, at the time, to have two hats on. If you not, can't get an engineer to mix it for you, have your composer hat yep. and then go away, have a cup of tea, come back in, be your mixer hat and try and do the two things separately. Obviously, if you need to tweak some composition yeah. at that point, then do that. But if you come with the two things, then you'll get a much better result, I think. Well, you also kind of have to fall out of love a little bit with what you've done, because a lot of these will be samples maybe you've made and stuff. And it's like, but I love the, the way that that 
you know, that me plucking that wine glass is full bandwidth. But it's like, but yeah, but you can't hear the basses now. And it's, you have to be a little bit kind of more brutal towards the yeah. source. Yeah, but, but that is also, that's what I was saying about, don't do that first in the mix. Do the, make it sound really nice first and then do that once you put it in the mix and balance it. Yeah. And you, I like to do is try not to, try not to destroy something, take all the interesting sound out of something, unless you really have to, or do it by overall volume first get it in the back you should i always i've always generally found 99 times out of 100 that i can make something really nice in a balance and make a balance mm -hmm. without having to scoop out Absolutely. too much or so, too much of something sometimes you have to take it out three or four db to make that space but and this is where automation can also hurt, of course hurt because you know your your ear i can't remember what it is it's like can only hear kind of five can de determine five different things at a point i don't think that's entirely true but i think as a consequence, you know, there are points where you go, well, this is this is taking the melody here, this yeah. is accompaniment, and this we just eke this little section out and all of that kind of uh, stuff. Uh, for sure, for sure. And that in, um, I've done a bit on here, you'll see, um, but mainly I've done it actually on a region, so you can just have each region in slightly different volumes. Uh, just nice little... It's a nice little... Two things I've learned about Logic, a programme that I've used for 20 years. So if you guys, well, that's a newish, that's a newish thing, so show region-based automation, you can either be track or region, but it's nice. It's a bit like the uh, the clip gain in Pro Tools, yeah. which I use all the time. It's so you don't have to go to the mix page or a uh, lane to be able to change away from the yeah. edit view. I just like to be able to see the edit view and thing, but you can just drag and drop these yeah. These volumes. And with Logic, if you are a Logic user, you'll also note it, know that dragging automation around can be a bit. Oh, it's a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. So that's that. We've got a bit of piano. I think I did a bit of. What did I do with the piano? Did a bit of. Oh, a bit of. Little, a little bit of compression on the piano. Again, subtle. You can see, look, it's again only a couple of dB just to take, just to help. The face is so good. Oh, it's, it's so you can just see what it's done. Yeah, it's lovely. And what's great is so you, can, you can also do this, which is quite nice. You can just listen to, you can listen to what it's compressing, which is quite a neat. Quite, I mean, you could even leave it. Yeah, you know, it's quite a cool. I think it's quite a cool sound. You know, just to be able to, be able to go. Oh, that's what it's compressing. It's not any more useful for than just knowing where to set the threshold, yeah. but Amazing. but it is quite cool anyway. Um, again, just not doing much. Again, this is a this is the Spitfire um, Orchestra Grand. Grand. Again, put a bit of because this is like playing a melodic thing. I've take gone more close, not let a bit less tree. Again, how I because I've recorded in that room all the time. I know <coughs> how I would sure. how I balance it. So that's. That's nice. Um, bit of timpani. Again, probably a bit, bit of, yeah, again, a small amount, a little bit of close mic in there with the tree. Sim ah, cymbal probably did most. I have a, a, a aversion to uh, sampled cymbals. Um, despite what having, is it about them, do you? I don't know. I think it's because they're used in a lot of time in that transition period, so you hear them. And despite us sampling many of them, they, there's still only a few, it's only a few sounds. So I like to just play around with the, again, I can see I've done a bit more EQ on this one. I used, I used the Logic one this time just to, just to demonstrate changing the, the Q levels, Q points here. So and again, this makes quite, makes quite a big difference actually on, the, on these. A bit less mm -hmm. bright, but a bit kind of warmer, um, again, use ambience to make it sound like it's the yeah. room rather than and no close on that one you don't need close on a suspended symbol um clarinet get a bit of bit of close mic as you'd want really because like i say these they're set back in the room you know maybe 20 which one which uh which library is this yeah, is so the, it's the uh, our spit so yes symphonic women so they, again they're not they're in the, they're probably slightly slightly Closer than they'd be if I was setting up with the big symphonic string section, yeah. but just because we cheated it a tiny bit to make sure it wasn't too yeah. ambient. But, but it fits in very much with the chamber. The whole point. That's, that's the whole point. It's, it, it does exactly. It's not. We're not. Um, we're only talking about a distance of a, like a meter, probably. Yeah. But um, it just. But that does make a nice difference. But again, it's nice. You would have a close mic on the player yeah. to get the to dig him out of the orchestra, but also just to give that nice little presence to help cut through. The, the the brightness of the strings we're using and the the kind of the closeness and the, because of the pizzicatos uh, and then the same with bassoon. I'll listen to each thing and add a reverb amount per sample again based on the articulation, yeah. um, whatever. So you can see that ever so slightly. If you go to the mixer page, you'll probably see they're ever so slightly different. Not much, not by much, but they're subtly different. Yeah, there's some ones here that got more subtly sure. different. Um, 
Okay, you can see I'm not using much. You can't see, you know, there's only a few things that have got quite a lot of two more than two things on them. Um, this this sound here, which is Christian's new favourite sound, uh, which I'll let you I'll let you explain what this is. But um, here I've done a bit more um, here. Let's hear it without first. Without any of the yeah, any, of, any the, of the any of the stuggers. You might read, be able to read that it says bass hums, which is a bass harmonic. So, um, Christian, I'll let you explain what this is. What this is. Yeah, it's, it's very, very difficult to get a harmonic out of a bass because basically they have to uh, rest their finger a perfect fifth above the note they're actually playing. And on basses, it's a big old neck. Yeah. Um, this is so good, I fear for bassists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they'll have to It's such a, a, a choral tone. This is one player, isn't it? This is yeah, Leon, uh, Leon Bosch, Bosch um, from the uh, new solo library. And um, for, but you wanted this to be uh, Hypes. hyped up, so we so we do, which I don't normally do very much. Is put a you'll notice that all these reverbs are being sent from sends to one reverb uh, down the bottom here. But I'm doing it all as one send, so I've got one reverb as a like essentially like it's a mixing desk. So you've got all your faders. Just pretend the piano keys are the faders. You've got your faders. And then you've got a reverb down this end and you're sending an aux send. Mm -hmm. So I find that is a much better way of blending the sound together. You've got much individual control. And also, if you need to mute um, the reverb for whatever reason, for stemming or for a directable reason, or you want to change the amount of reverb you've got, you can just go through and actually just turn up the reverb there rather than having to do each channel by channel. But also, if you put it across and then use the mix function, you're changing the dynamics again, so you're then having to rebalance it after you've done it, right. which is which, which is frustrating. But however, for certain effects, I think it's always very nice to actually to do that certain yeah, thing where it's inherently part of the sound. Exactly. Yeah. So therefore, then it makes total sense to use a computer, much more computer way of doing it, and put it across essentially what's an insert send. It's not called that, but on a mixing desk, it'd be called the insert send. So again, we're using the uh, fab filter. You like to be, this works really well with your travelling rig, doesn't it? Because yes, because you don't need an eye lock, yeah. and it's not hardware. No, it's all. Um, and yes, that's a long old decay. So we put it twenty seconds, yeah. But you can hear it's. But again, a hundred percent mix. So we're only using the reverb return, which then suddenly turns it into a synth kind of sound, almost really, doesn't it? Very organic sound, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, and I've tweaked yours a little bit. I made it um, a little bit more chorus, which is quite nice. Um, added a bit more stereo width just to kind of make it a bit more just to make it a bit faker almost really this is very pretty to be able to I have all this this less a nice really nice interface and then I went uh, then I went a bit further with it so I then um, compressed that a bit to try and make it a bit flatter to make, again make it a bit more mm -hmm. um, so you can say here I'm using a little bit more the threshold is right down obviously it's a very quiet thing but, but again I'm not using much um, and then there's a bit of EQ on that as well um, to as you can see to actually just to emphasize the brightness some more But it's very pretty. Uh, one thing I did, another little logic top tip is MIDI chase mode. Because if you don't, you'll know if you start in the middle of a note, it doesn't play it until the next note. Yeah. yeah, which is which is boring. Um, it's but, not that's not great used when you use Evos because it'll uh, cut into a different part. Uh, what I use is I free I use the freeze function, but that's great for just standard. Oh, actually, okay, right, fine. Yeah. There you go. Right, there we go. I've learned something as well. There you go. Now, after doing the all the soloing part. It's a balanced thing, so you can say I've got some, ignore the fact that there's some automation on this, but I'll go through, listen to it, and make a make a change of the balance. Let's do it here, and you can see gone through. Yeah, and, and my because when I gave it to you, it was fairly flat. It was, really. yeah. So you can see I've made a few just a few little tweaks here and there, and then I've gone through and done a few rides. But I'll play you with it with that. So you hear the basses don't come in on that first note anywhere near as nicely. So it's a tiny little, tiny little thing, but just put that back on again, and you just hear it. Just gives it much more presence immediately. And it's nice. It just helps just introduce it a bit more. And again, just you're just listening to it so differently from me. Yes. I just would have never have thought of that. No. Um, again, there's not much you can see. There's very little because it's a great have a cup of tea whilst that dies out. Jay. Yeah. <laughs> again, there's another one. Another again, another. The opposite here is to just help blend this in.
if you were playing with musicians, they would automatically hear what they're playing into and then come in from almost from nothing, or you'd ask them to play from nothing to blend in, so you don't actually hear that yes. introduction. And you can't; it's very difficult. And it has to, an emotional effect, isn't it? It's, uh, very much so. By doing just a few little alteration rides like that, or with fades, we've discussed that in the past with fades out and fades in to notes. Yeah. If they, if you have printed them out, it's just helped to, to try and make it just feel that little bit more human. Yeah. So, um, although we're not using the stereo bus, we're using a different output. It's just the same rules apply. So this is essentially my stereo my stereo bus. So. Um, People often ask what you've put on it and and how much you compress it and whatever. Again, the same rules apply. I've again I've just used this um, multiband just on each frequency just to help. Again, not much, not doing very much, just helping just to control it. And then I've got a normal compressor. Small, small ratio. It's just a, it's just, just doing a nice. A nice so you're a big fan of Fab Filter at the moment. I am, but also the, the, you also don't have anything else on your rig for me to use that much. So I'm used, not, the not that much. Oh, you got the wave stuff. I'm not. I'd use, I'd prefer the Fab Filter to the wave. So yeah, okay. so um, yeah, I'm using. The, I'm a bit of a fan of the Fab Filter for sure. I, mean, I like, I like the GUIs. I've got. If I'm mixing myself, I've got a few different ones I like to use for different. On a mix bus, I might use um, the 33609 emulator because I really like. Yes. Not just it has an EQ kind of sound in yes. it, and I really like that sound. Hence why I mean I know you're a fan of the of the hard hardware unit. Yeah. And it's it's nice that gives a really nice gel across. And you'd use that the UAD. Thing? The UAD, yeah, the UAD. Um, I've got um, I use the Sonox uh, compressors, and I then for a mix I'd use that, and I'd also use a. Fab filter one's yeah. nice. Again, a tiny bit of EQ across the mix as well. Again, these are small amounts. Not trying to, not trying to change the sound at this mm -hmm. point because I do that in the balance and also in, in the in individual tracks. But again, just to make it, listen to it and just go, okay, well, it's just got needs a little bit more. That's a word of kind of caution to mix engineers. Is is about. Certainly with applied music, is uh, I've worked with mix engineers who really change the character of the sound and it's an absolute nightmare for directors because they feel they've signed off on something and suddenly something arrives on the dubbing stage That's sounding amazing. totally differently yeah. and they can't articulate what's happened to it. I, I don't want to get that phone call. My preference is to make what the composer's been working on just better and so it makes it almost be transparent to a certain degree. And just make it just just oh this, that sounds good well, great that's that if yeah. that's that's what I want I don't want to be I don't want to put too much of a mark on it unless that's specifically what's been asked for mm -hmm. um, so again just a tiny bit more presence a bit more of that essentially what I'm doing here is a little bit of a little bit of mastering really I'm also using the um, Fab Filter Pro L you must download the L, the new L2 which is excellent and also works in 5.1 which is very useful make sure it's not the output is not at zero dB because if you then make it into an MP3 that actually adds a bit of volume, and therefore it will then distort at that point yeah. into an MP3. So give yourself, I found about point, point 0.3 of a dB is enough yeah. to give yourself converting a WAV, particularly, particularly very, I mean, this isn't loud. But, um, and, and just different playback engines respond to 0 dB oh, differently. Yeah. So, so I've noticed Premiere Pro totally clips at 0 dB, you yeah. know, like a horrible, and then some will compress, yeah, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So just putting that back. And again, you'll see what this is doing. I mean, obviously, this is adding quite a lot of, Game because I've adjusted everything. I because I'm not don't want to go in and rebalance everything. I'm making the gain up at the very end, which is a bit of a cheat, but actually works very nicely for a project like this where this wants to sound really nice. So I could do it in the same. I could do it in the makeup gain here, and a lot of these plugins have the auto gain, which beware of that because it can obviously if you put the compressor on and not realise you put the auto gain on it, it will make it three or four dB louder without you even thinking about it and it then changes your balance so if you're just sticking a compressor on because oh, I really like this mix but that's just sticking out a bit too much in, mm -hmm. in occasion if you then put this on I don't realise it's also gained it might be three or four to be and you're like well, how's the balance this is completely changed and it's because of that so I can make the gain up here uh, I just make it up at the end I tend to make the gain at the very end because then you just you've got much more control and you can sure. see where it's at um, and then also if you then realise you if you're limiting it too much or compressing it too much you can then <coughs> fix it at that point and if you look at what I've done here it's very very little limiting in fact virtually none it's just um, it's even that big Colenio didn't go over it might just be all I want to do is just to be able to turn up the mix by an extra dB 
um, and you'll find somewhere in here there's a there's a spike that's um, that's big. There are, there's our spike. So, you know, I might as well make the whole mix a dB louder by taking out that one spike that would go go over. Time. So obviously that's what a mastering engineer would probably do. They do it a bit more prettier than this, but this is you know this is for what it, what it is. So it makes it louder and sounds and sounds nice. And we all know that louder often sounds better. So. <laughs> and a word of uh, caution with the mix bus um, uh, don't add uh, stuff to your mix bus un until you're mixing because it'll not only add uh, massive amounts of latency whilst you're playing it'll also uh, affect the way that you're using your samples I do an order of, of the solo make each instrument sound great uh, balance to some degree normally then we put the mix mix stuff on the mix bus at that point before I start doing rides because then that's that will affect yeah. your rides yeah but. absolutely fantastic well shall we hear it down Jake, thank you so much My for the show. So actually, it's been a really like structured tutorial that has taught me a hell of a lot, and I'm sure you guys as well. So thanks, yeah, thanks no a lot. So if you haven't subscribed, hit subscribe. If you want to be notified, hit the little bell button. Thanks as always for watching, and see you again soon.